The second winning series is a unique sports program that probes into the often controversial world of professional and amateur sports. Sports View Today. Everybody and welcome to another edition of Sports View. I'm Ron Cameron. And I'm Bob Page. Our sponsors in the program, Al Dietrich Oldsmobile. Now, what is it? The same old mug, new location. That's one of his slogans. Where the runway ends, the deals begin another new slogan because he's moved to a new location just east of the Pontiac Airport on M59 in Waterford. Island Road. Thank you. And he also has 1.9% financing. Did you ever get a new car? That Maserati outside yours that I saw? No Sorry, comment. that fits your image, pal, no to a comment. T. You haven't got no comment, no huh? Comment. Uh, then we'll continue with the sponsors, yes, Fred Wetzel and the folks at TCOM Pagers, Wide State Beeper Coverage, wherever you're watching this program in southeastern or in mid-Michigan, Maxie's Main Street. And don't forget, now that fall football season is coming, uh, Maxie's has Monday night football, all the games on the wide screen TV. the winter TV. football season, too? Uh, if there is one, okay. that's right. Uh, that's true, if there is one. Yeah. Now, sports fans generally you like to plug yes, that, wouldn't Yes, I do you? want to plug that. This is so issue number 12. Reaction. Issue number Number 13 will be on the newsstands within another week or so. And Denny McLean is still writing right from jail, and we got a whole bunch of new writers. It's really going fantastic. And if you want to subscribe, get the pen and paper ready. In just a couple minutes, we'll tell you how you can do it. We have just Jalapeno that. Pizza and Pasta across from the Westland Mall. Pass, the Pro-Am Sports Systems. 583-7600 if you'd like uh, to call Pass. And as far as Jalapeno Pizza and Pasta, you got specials every night and liquor with the meal. Last time, Bob Page ate there. He didn't even leave a tip. That's because you said what, you... What more do I do That's because say? you said... Well, what you could say is that you took me there and stiffed them for the tab, as you usually do. No, you, you, no, you walk wait. out and just General on these things. Listen, it's what? a class restaurant. See, you're always, you're you're always great pasta. at telling one half the story. Then, as Paul Harvey says, I tell the rest of the story. The rest right? of the story, the rest of the story is, is that you walked out bell, without right? leaving a tip. <laughs> I was nice enough to go patronize one of your sponsors. Listen, how nice how enough to go and, appear, and also appear on that shortwave radio program of yours. Huh. My family tried to hear me on your show, and they were down in the basement DXing with the crystal headsets on. Listen. They got to Radio Free Europe on the right. They passed the Brit British on, Broadcasting on, Corporation on. on the left, and they still. Well, that's because they're in California. That's <laughs> so your mother's still in California. Right, well, we got one more sponsor, too. Isn't she still in California? She still All right, then. One that's more sponsor. Uh, we have uh, Joe Zimmer and the folks out at Zim's Entertainment Center just off I-75 at the Baldwin Road exit. <laughs> it's a guy that played for Don Zimmer. I think did you play for Don Zimmer one time. Mm, no. no, just missed him. Frank? Yes, no, yes. No, yes. Remember. He's a, so many managers. <laughs> yeah, yes. and not only so many managers for him, but Don Zimmer is kind of a forgettable character, too, in a sense. Oh, he's but, a character. But Frank Tanana, Detroit's own, is here on Sports View today, and we'll talk with him about uh, his season personally that, he, that he has had, which has been very good. Nice and, of course, the Tigers' year, which has been outstanding. I think it's surpassed. Made a fool out of you, which is hard to do. Now, I don't, Frank, please don't think I'm tying this in with you, but one of the things we didn't comment on the last program was the old timers game. Sunday. That's right. You were in your heyday, Bob. I didn't I mean, get down there to see it. And, you know, oh, I didn't get down there until later either. Well, you know, one of the reasons I didn't go was that, the, you know, the reunions are wonderful that they're having these days, but frankly, I don't like the games themselves. I, I would rather remember K-Line and remember Aaron and remember Banks and these guys as they were. I don't particularly want to see my childhood heroes at age 55 with a big pot belly waddling around the bases. That doesn't turn me on at all. Well, teach his own. A lot of people like that. Well, I'm asking what you think about it, Ron. I didn't go you either. are I hesitant to, to express an opinion. Uh, no, I can't no. believe uh, that. I, I think it's fun. I think that some of those guys were in pretty fair shape. Gates Brown, however, was not one of them. He hit one off the fence. 
And barely made it to first base. And Willie Horton hit one into the upper deck. Yeah, oh. And immediately his agent sent out feelers to all Major League <laughs> yeah. Baseball teams for stretch drive help in the month of September. We're taping this program on uh, Monday morning, and there were a couple of important things that were supposed to come down decisions uh, on Monday, which we obviously do not know about. One we discussed last program, the Kirk Gibson arbitration ruling. Another, the um, Chris Carter situation down in Columbus. Ohio State officials were meeting on Monday. It's bad no matter how they to will, determine. They do. I, I think I agree with that. But they were meeting to determine whether they were going to appeal to the NCAA to have Chris Carter's eligibility reinstated. Now, for those of you who may be only lukewarm football fans, you haven't followed this, Chris Carter took money illegally, according to NCAA rules, from an agent. He's now ineligible for his senior season at Ohio State. You know, you know what's, what's as bad as anything in sports today is the courts. And they're right. I don't, I'm not criticizing the way they operate. But I think if you could leave sport, and it's not a sport that much, it's a business. But if you could leave it separate from the courts, you'd see a How lot better. How can you? There's too much money at stake. Well, yeah, There's I guess so. But boy, it's just, it's, it's just too bad it has to come to that. I don't think Chris Carter should be reinstated, frankly. He has clearly, I don't, he has clearly broken NCAA that's rules. That's right. And I don't think he should be allowed to play in the NFL for a couple and of years. And there, I think you're totally full. Well, why? Because oh. he broke. Because he, he went, knowing the NCAA rules, I think the player has got to be held accountable for these situations. Ron, NCAA makes its own rules. It has nothing so to do with it. So what? He's playing nothing. under to do with the court of law. It, he did nothing the court illegal. Of law, no, no. Fella. He did nothing illegally. He did nothing that it's was the illegal. The point is, he, he joined the NCAA, he knows the bylaws, and he went and broke them. And I think that he should be thrown out. And I don't think he should. The only Fine. reason he did it because he wants to play in the Fine. NFL. For all the legal scholars along with you in the audience, I am now dying to hear the legal rationale for barring him. Damn legalness. I, no, so, I think baseball is played for the fun of it, supposedly. And I think, sure, there's too much money involved, but I think you've got to get it out of these courts and these judges. Two law professors from the University of Detroit. Detroit wrote an interesting uh, piece on this very subject in the papers on Sunday, and they said that Bo Schembechler and some of these coaches ought to thank Pete Rozelle for holding, if they do, this supplemental draft. Because on what right does college football or anybody in this country of ours, what right do they have to deny someone the opportunity to make a living? Well, the, the, if Chris Carter wants to play in the NFL at age 19, whole, who the heck? No, this is part and parcel of the deal. It's, no, it's still a whole Ron, this is the situation. central issue. Chris Carter's class has not graduated from college. I know Hence, that. according to NFL bylaws, he cannot play in the National Football League and earn a living. Because I don't think the person is ready mentally or physically to play in the is NFL. Is that for you to determine? No, I, I, I think, first of all, I think you're hurting the, uh, yeah. hurting the young man. I think it's best for the young man if they just go by the NCAA. They do not babysit any other group of 20-year-olds like this. If you're a college student and you're majoring in business or finance at the University of Michigan and you go in during your junior year and say, Professor, I really appreciate what you're trying to do for me here, but I think I'm ready for the business world now. I think the NFL they say to turn their back on them. Good luck. And I think they're doing good that. Good luck. I think they should turn their back the on The National Football League cannot turn their back on them. I think they should. They know they're hey, going to be sued. you can't tell there's an individual no owner what he, can, what, what, he, what he has to do. Yeah, but there's no way you can deny anybody in this Each country. Each owner should just say, I don't want them. You can't deny anybody the right to make a Hey, you you can say you don't want him. It's yeah. your money. Yeah, don't I, tell him what you can do with I your money. Chris Carter's in the National Football League. I hope he's not, too, because he's, he's obviously, uh, obviously there's a lot of people that question if he has the ability to play in the NFL. NFL going on strike? That's another thing that was coming. Well, that's, it's very, very close now, and uh, I hope not, but uh, I think it's a good possibility of them going on strike. We will. I'm predicting now no, but I... I think they will. Do you? I think they'll walk. And here come the owners with this ridiculous plan. Did you see this? I saw that. Did you see this? To, to, they're, they're going to go ahead and have the season, even if the players strike, they're going to take the veterans who refuse to walk the picket lines, who will cross the lines, come into camp, and they're going to take all the free agents and rookies that they've cut and have a season anyway. Brilliant. That's interesting. It's amazing some of the things people, the way things, we people It's very interesting. Well, days. the fans are dumb enough to go along with it. Frank Tanana is here on Sports View today, and we'll be back to talk with a veteran Tigers pitcher right after these messages. about to embark on a great crusade. The eyes of the world are upon us. Our mission, crush the enemy before they crush us. Like America, Uncle Al will come through for you, crushing prices on Oldsmobiles and GMC trucks. Say hello, America. Sayonara, imports. Tanks, but no tanks to imports. Visit Uncle Al's giant new dealership on M59 just east of the Pontiac Airport, where the runway ends, the deals begin. Jalapeno Pizza is a great place to eat. Hi, two for non smoking, please. Right this way. Wow, look at all this food. A two pound wet burrito, a 16 ounce porterhouse, and there's pasta too. But did you see the daily specials? 
What a deal for $6.25. See, didn't I tell you jalapeno pizza and pasta is a great place to eat? Jalapeno pizza and pasta on Corn Road across from Westland Mall. I'm sorry, she's out of the office for the day and there's no way to contact her. With a pager from TCOM, you could contact her anytime. I know it's an emergency, but it's out of the building now. May I call you later? With Motorola pagers from TCOM, you can deal with emergencies now. I'm sorry, our delivery man is on call right now. We won't be able to help you till tomorrow. Hi, my name is Fred Wetzel with TCOM Paging. If these problems seem familiar to you, then you need a TCOM pager. You'd be surprised how affordable they are. Probably wonder how you've done without one. Give us a call at 559-6826. Zim's just off I-75 between the Silver Dome and Pine Knob is rapidly becoming one of southeastern Michigan's premier entertainment centers. Whether it's bowling, video games, and Zim's huge arcade or outdoor sports, Zim's boasts two of the finest softball facilities going, available for your league or tournament. And even if you don't play at Zim's, you can play after the game at Club Zim's, drink specials nightly, live entertainment, and dancing. Hi, I'm Joe Zimmer. I'd like to invite each and every one of you to come out and see us at Zim's Spirits and Eatery, our bowling center, and our new softball facility. Look forward to seeing you. We're back on Sports View with Tigers pitcher Frank Tanana coming off an unbelievable year. We were talking during the break of, uh, about Nolan Ryan, how, and I say he has really never thrown better. Not he hasn't thrown harder. He's lost a little off the fastball, but he's striking out so many printings pitched. But just like you say, you're not going to believe it with a 4-13 and record. His ERA is still in the twos. Unbelievable. Here's a guy right here. Now, there are some that believe that you have never thrown the ball better than you are right now. Well, they were saying that three weeks ago. Well, I uh, did have a couple of tough starts. <laughs> We've had a couple of rough outings, but really as far as uh, control, you know, stuff on the ball, it's been, it's been a great season. Do you think it's the best year for you personally as far as what you've been able to do with what you've had, of course? Well, I don't think so, Ron, to tell you the truth. Um, I've pitched some pretty good ball in other years, did not have the team that I'm playing for right now. And you know, I'd be foolish to say that I could do it without them because I can't. You know, this called ball club this year has scored a lot of runs for me. They've played good defense behind me. And I've made some pretty good pitches at times. But without my teammates, you know, I wouldn't be having the kind of year I'm having. Did you expect the Tigers to have this kind of season? Yeah, I really did. Did you? I really you thought did. thought you guys could I win the American thought, League East. I've thought since I joined this team, uh, being with these guys, seeing their, their character, the character. way they go That's about the their, their business, the way they, you know, I've seen us get blown out, lose ball games, and come back the very next day and just stomp on people. Mm -hmm. And I'm excited, and I always did think, even in 86, 85 too, that uh, you know, we had the club. Without Lance Parrish, even. Well, we knew that that was going to be a question mark, naturally. I mean, to lose a guy like Lance, but you know, Matt Noakes has stepped right in. Oh, Who could have ever thought that? But the young man got himself a chance, and he's made the best of it. And Mike Heath yeah. has you look also at, and, done and a great Frank, job. And look at the production out of the number four slot in the order. Parrish's batting slot. I mean, Alan Trammell's just he's been, been unbelievable. unbelievable this. Yeah. You mentioned the character, and I think that's a key. I don't think this is necessarily the best team in baseball, but you're, you're the best record because of the character. And you've got some ball play, play players that can play, too. Do you feel, though, that Sparky has a lot to do with the character of this team? I really do. I have been so impressed with his meetings, the words that he said, the, the confidence that he's shown in his ball club, uh, his demeanor, the way he goes about his business, you know, such a professional that, um, you know, I just knew that we've got, what I like about it, Ron, is that not many, and you said it yourself, you don't think this is the best team. This is a very good team. I agree. This is a very talented team. And I love the fact that nobody really believes it is, because I think from 1 through 24, we've got the most very talented group of players. But, you, you know, going back to the thing on character, they made a couple of moves of getting Bill Madlock and, and uh, Doyle Alexander, who have had reputations with other teams as being a bit of a dog, both of them. In fact, uh, one the general manager of Chicago said the most miserable human being in the world is Doyle Alexander. Hank Peter said that. <laughs> Hank Peter said that. Mm -hmm. And yet they come over here, and that seems to be a different situation. Do you feel you just blend in with what you come to? If this had been a bad ball club, they just fit right in with that. Well, you know, with this situation here, that Sparky just said he's not going to have any bad apples on his team. And we get along tremendously. Bill Madlock has come in and fit in. Doyle has come in. Doyle, just from the short time I've been with him, keeps to himself pretty much. He's a pro. He goes about his work. He's very intense, takes it very seriously. And he's just come in and pitched great ball. And 
you know, the pieces have just fit well. There's guys in the clubhouse. We come to play ball. We don't worry about personalities. It's time to go to work, and everybody is... Which is uh, not the same with other teams, is it? No. You get these petty jealousies, and I don't think that there's any there, and, and Sparky's to be credited for that. I'm going to take a look at you in, uh, in action this year, and I want you to tell us about Frank Tanana now at age... What are you, 32 now, aren't you? 33? Uh, 28. 28. Uh, You've been saying that for a few that's years. That's what Bob Page has been saying. He's 34, 35. 34 July, tell us about right. Frank Tanana, the pitcher now, the way you think out there as opposed a 90 to mile were, an hour uh, 90 mile an hour fastball or when you were younger that was not a 90 mile an hour fastball Close. well it's just uh, right now I've got to be so fine and the object for me is to keep them off balance uh, I've got to throw that slow curve and I've got to make that really low 80 fastball yeah. look like it's 90. Yeah. And, and you, it does. And you, and you, do, and you set it up, Frank, because here you come in with a slow curveball to Gaetti, and he looks foolish. Exactly. Strike three. Exactly. It's just a guessing game, and you know, hopefully then when they do make contact, they hit it at somebody, and they don't make contact on the fat part of the bat. We've slumping lately, and it's not that we're making bad pitches, it's just they're not hitting it at people. Of course, you're saying we're slumping lately. We're taping this program on Monday, and it could be that you've got two no-hitters since that point. No, oh, I don't think so. Frank. You know, a lot of people will not consent to an interview the day they pitched. Frank's pitching right. Monday night, and here he is doing the show with us. How, why are you different than most people? Well, I think I'm different because I have this whole shebang in proper perspective, Ron, that, um, you know, I've prepared to pitch tonight. I don't have to sit around the house and think about all day long this game coming up. It's not a do or die, life or death right. situation for Frank Tanana mm -hmm. any longer. Yeah. Um, I can go home, I'm going to enjoy my kids, my wife, I'm certainly not going to mow the lawn you know, or do anything physical. I'm going to save my strength for tonight. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to come here because I told you guys I'd come here three <laughs> weeks we ago that. not knowing I was going to yeah. pitch. But because it came up, yeah. I'm not going to call you and say no. I. That's yeah, great. Right. He's an athlete. That's great. Yeah. Frank, when you were blowing people away when you were 23 years old with that tremendous arm you had before you heard it, was it more fun than, than getting them out with guile now and, and slow stuff? Well, I don't think it was more fun. I've enjoyed both experiences, Bob. Uh, blowing them away, challenging them, knowing that if when I threw it I could tell them it's coming and they still probably couldn't hit it. And now really getting the most out of what's left of a dead arm. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, pitching more with my head than with, of course, just the arm. And yet you tell me that you think you can throw several years longer, don't you? Well, you know, if you take it one day at a time, you know, I may throw tonight and the arm may go. You haven't got much more speed to lose in the fastballs, <laughs> what you're saying that <laughs> is what it is. Yeah, really, but the <laughs> manner in which I throw, that uh, if the desire stays that I want to continue to play and Physically, I stay healthy. There's no reason. You, know, you look at Tommy John and guys like that in their mid-40s sure. taking good care of themselves. My habits now are such that I take very good care of my body, and I see no problem throwing you know, a few more years. We'll continue with Detroit native Frank Tanana. And talk about his hitting. Well, that'll take two seconds. <laughs> yeah, uh, really. <laughs> right after this time on. <laughs> It's me again. In the past, you've heard a number of people give reasons why they come to Maxi's. Maybe you're not yet convinced. Let's ask a few more. I come to Maxi's for the fine selection of wine, the great pickles, and the owner, Steve Pino, owes me $14.50. I come to Maxi's because the food is great. The hors d'oeuvres, sensational. It doesn't cost a lot of bread. And most important of all, Steve, the owner, is buying. For the selection of fine wines, of course. Mainly, I come to Maxi's because Ron Cameron doesn't come here. Of course, there are other reasons why you should be coming to Maxi's. On Sunday nights, we feature the Maxi Jam with some of the best rock and rollers this area has to offer. Every Tuesday and Saturday, we have classics on video with Elmar. Of course, we always have our outdoor cafe open for your fun and enjoyment. And one day, Bill Sparks might show up. Boy, there was a lot of old-timers in that commercial, and there's a lot of old-timers writing for sports fans, including, including Ron Cameron, Bob Page. <laughs> well, this is a paper that's going strong. This issue number 12, issue number 13 is on the, will be on the newsstands next week, and I do want to tell you this, and if you want hard-hitting sports and sports from people that know what they're writing and know what they're discussing about, the real stars write for sports fans. Thank you, Ron. Right. That's just, nice of you. Well, Thank you. Bob Page hasn't paid, so he won't be writing very much longer. He owes me. 
<laughs> so if you'd like to subscribe for a year, it's $15 a year, and Denny McLean, yes, is still writing from his jail cell as we speak. We've got Ernie Highwell, George Kell, Mike Downey, Eli Zarrett, George Allen, Dick Vitale, Don Cherry, Bob Feller, and a whole bunch more for you locally and nationally. And uh, I'll tell you the local writers in a minute after I tell you how you can subscribe. A $15 check or money order will do it for a year. Make it payable to the, sport, uh, to the sports paper, Sports Fans Journal. Send to Sports Fans Journal, P.O. Box 12170, Birmingham, Michigan, 48012. Now, if you want to pick up a copy first, you can stop by your local newsstand, bookstore, or Tiger Stadium souvenir stand, or call this number for more information, 3503530. It's a four-color paper, and our local writers, in addition to the ones I told you about, include uh, people like Bob Reynolds is still around, believe it or not, writing, as is Mark Belter, the old town crier for the Free Press for many years. He's going, and we've got Dave Dials, We've got George Blaha. We've got Emmanuel Stewart writing some. We have Duffy Doherty from California writing. Jim Harbaugh, the quarterback of the Bears, is writing. And we've got Jim Northrup. We've got uh, Sonny Elliott and a whole bunch more for you. And there's how you subscribe. So hopefully you'll pick up sports fans. And too. we're back on Sports View today. And our guest is former Detroit Catholic Central High School star Frank Tanana. And what you mentioned there before the break uh, begs an issue that, I, that longtime fans of yours, of course, have heard all about. But maybe some people aren't longtime baseball fans and don't know. You said you take care of yourself now. You were a hell raiser when you were a kid, pitching with the California Angels. And, and before the, that. And the Bo Belinsky boos and broads uh, stories just abound regarding Frank Tanana. And then you changed. Well, then, um, you know, came to the realization, and I thank God, that that type of living, that type of lifestyle, first of all, is not over a long haul what it's cut out to be. It's not satisfying. It's not fulfilling. Um, it's searching for something, um, fulfillment in life, meaning in life, that can't be found in a bottle. It can't be found uh, tell in pleasure. Tell him this, please. Tell what him What do you mean, this. tell me? I haven't heard it in months. <laughs> you know, Frank Tanana just heard about Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. and in 1978, um, began to attempt them on my own, you know, live a, the Christian lifestyle, taking good care of myself, and just began to take on a different set of values, and, and then in 1983, uh, just gave my life, submitted my life to God, to Christ. You were telling us before about the fact when you and Nolan Ryan pitched together in California, you weren't comfortable as the two stars because there was jealousy between the two of you and rivalry. Now that is the old Frank Tanana too, isn't it? Well, that sure is. See, because back then, if anybody got any of the glory, any of the highlights, any of the, just the print, it bothered me. I wanted to be the star. Mm -hmm. I had to be it. I wanted all the attention. I was like a little baby that craves, that cries. Look at me, notice me, and see when Nolan would do well, he would get it, and that would bother me. Now that's not very conducive. I mean, I just wasn't that good of a team player, mm -hmm. and I didn't help the team, but they put up with it because I was one of the, quote, stars. But believe me, I'm so thankful that God has rearranged my thinking on that, and I can enjoy my teammates' success now and pull for them and cheer for them. Yeah, well, you went to high school, you went to a, a tremendous high school, mm -hmm. as far as that goes, Catholic Central. Yes. And, of course, my first experience with you is when I'm hearing how what a great, this is the best high school player in the state of Michigan. Well, let me tell you something, he was a great high school basketball player, Oh, too. yes, his dad was, Catholic too. His dad was yeah. a great mm -hmm. athlete. Oh. Yeah. So, anyway, he, uh, you ought to know that. That was in your heyday. <laughs> but, you know, I umpired in the Catholic League then, and Frank came over to, they played a game, Catholic Central at Mansfield. And here he played first base, he hit a home run. Now, he hasn't hit one since. So he should still he remember the date and the well, time what, of the day. Is kind of claim now he was a great hitter when he was younger? Is he that, was. Is that he what the a, story oh, is? Listen, he had one on a man's so field. Listen, so he had one on a man's <laughs> field. And so I saw this guy in action then. But you were a great athlete at Catholic Central. And yet the Tigers have taken a lot of criticism over the years for not signing you. But it's a fact. When your senior year, you didn't even pitch, did you? Well, I pitched, but I did have a bad arm. And, of course, you know, they knew that. I left the championship game of the Catholic League after four innings, Ron, with a bad arm. And so and, what are you going to do? So. Gonna, yeah, well, I had to. I made a decision. The pain was so great. I said, look, I'm probably going to go to Duke now, university on a basketball scholarship. Had agreed to do that. And the California Angels had gotten such a good report from a scout that seen me in a summer league the year before mm -hmm. that they just went ahead, obviously missed that game in Tiger Stadium. Missed that. And said, here, we're going to sign this guy. Tigers, who can blame him? You oh, don't no, call I can't blame one him. first draft choice on somebody you know has got a bad arm. You can hope and wish. But if I was healthy, I 
Tigers wouldn't have had a chance, probably. But now you went out your first year in organized ball. You pitched what one time? You used as a pinch runner, I think. The only I game you appeared. Pinch in. ran in uh, one game. It did so well they promoted me to A ball the next year. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Frank, and what does it mean at this stage of your career, the last couple of years, to come home to Detroit and now to be part of this Tiger team in '87? It looks like it's got a good chance to win the whole thing. Well, I'll tell you, it is really a, a blessing, a great opportunity for you know myself, having grown up here, to now pitch in the uniform that. You know, I enjoyed watching all the stars, McAuliffe and Kaline and Cash, and those guys uh, pitch in, and to be a part of it is really been a thrill. And I, and I thank my God and Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for that opportunity. And you used to look at the Tigers staff and say they need Frank Tanana when you were elsewhere, didn't you? They need left-hand pitching. Yeah. I did. In Texas, you know, you'd sit there, and we were scuffling and struggling, and... You'd look out there, and you'd see Jack and, and Dan and those guys pitching, and didn't see a left-hander. Just the thoughts would go, boy, I'd, I'd fit in good on that staff. And, you know, it, it came about. And maybe it's a world championship? Could be. What do you think? I like our chances. Mm -hmm. I've liked them from the start. Uh, the way we're playing now, I think we're probably the, the best team in baseball. I want to get to the last commercial break, but one other thing. When you were younger, we used to talk all the time, and you'd say, Bob, you can't be considered a great pitcher until you've won 20. You never quite got there. Is that, <laughs> the, is that the one regret that you've got from your baseball career? I have no regrets. I really don't. The only regrets were the um, the manner. Well, really, no regrets. I've given it my best, Bob, every time out. Mm -hmm. I've every time I've stepped between the lines, I've been ready to pitch, and I've always done my best. I've won 19. I've never won 20. And if I never win 20, I'll have no regrets. We'll close it out with Frank Tanana right after this. Two and a half years, Dugan's Irish Pub has become one of the hottest spots on the North Woodward Strip. Come on inside and I'll tell you why. You start out with a famous Big Chief Burger, an institution in Royal Oak since 1954. Dugan's has the cheapest drinks in Metro Detroit. Specials every night, not to mention the best looking waitresses serving those drinks. We've got oldies on the jukebox all the time in a great casual atmosphere to meet your friends. So come on out to Dugan's on Woodward, just north of 13 Mile, and have a bite of nostalgia. Did you know that 125 million Americans didn't visit a dentist last year? Why? Not money. According to surveys, they're afraid. Well, modern technology has taken the fear out of visiting the dentist. Here at my office in West Bloomfield, we've got a relaxed, friendly atmosphere. I provide the highest quality care with an emphasis on the prevention of tooth and gum disease. So if you're one of the many people not seeing a dentist, you're taking a serious risk with your future health. Like smoking cigarettes, it's a ticking time bomb. The 1987 Major League Baseball season is in full swing. And now, you can track every team all summer long by tuning to the Pennant Chase on Pats. Join host Larry Osterman each week as he takes a look at the Majors Divisional Races, the American League and National League Players of the Week, as well as exclusive up-close interviews with the game's biggest stars. To stay up to date with all the happenings in and around the world of baseball, join us every week for the Pennant Chase on Michigan's cable home of the Tigers, Pats. about Detroit. We have for 90 years. Closing out with Frank Tanana, Tiger pitcher. You think this team can win it. Now, one other team in baseball, you say, if we don't win it, this team's going to win it. Well, I'll tell you what. Toronto, of course, is a very good ball club. And if we don't, I think Toronto will. Is it going to come down to those last three games of the season? Toronto versus Detroit for the American League East Championship? I don't think so. I don't think it's going to come down to that. You'll have it wrapped up before that? I think that? we'll have it in hand before that. For your Ooh, sake, I hope so. It'd be, the, it'd be the apogee of your career, wouldn't it, to pitch in a World Series here in your hometown? It'd be, it'd be great. Your parents? And, it would be nice. Yeah. 
Frank, thanks for coming on, especially well, on the day that you pitched this morning. Oh, my we're pleasure, this program. I want to thank uh, our sponsors in the program as well. We had uh, Jalapeno Pizza. You don't have it in front of you. You want me to help you? I'll memorize it, no problem. Jalapeno Pizza and Pasta across the Westland Mall. We had Steve Pino and the folks at Maxie's Main Street. Zim's Entertainment Center. Don Joe Zimmer, Zimmer and the, the gang. Folks. Just not Don. And he, by the way, you did play for uh, Don Zimmer in Texas. You yes. Remembered. Uh, off I-75 at the Bowling Road exit. Go ahead. Sports, Sports Fans, Fans Journal. Issue number 12, going strong. Issue 13 will be out. Denny McLean still from jail. A whole lot more. Fred Wetzel and the folks at uh, TCOM Pagers, past the Pro-Am Sports Systems, and of course Al Dietrich Olsenbeel. Jalapeno Pizza and Pasta across the West Line. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. You did not. You can hear Ron Cameron, as I mentioned, shortwave radio Wednesday afternoon, 1090 AM, 4 to 5, <laughs> and my program runs on a real station every morning. With w all the old timers. WRIF, like like the home of rock and roll, 637, 38, 30, All the old timers. 1 FM. Thanks to there? Frank Tanana, except for you, and thank you for joining us. I'm not old. Not as old as you. Bye-bye, everybody. Day.